Hello Math 7 kids, welcome back to another lesson. Today we're going to talk about how to compare data sets. And we have this little trick to help us remember what are the things that we need to do, and that has to do with socks. S-O-C-S in this case. So S stands for shape. And when we say shape, we're just talking about the distribution of the data set. And then O would be outliers. We've talked about outliers. That's just when you have a big or a small number. It's outside the regular set that you're working with. It's kind of off to the right or off to the left. And then we have our center, or another way of that is central tendency is what we talked about in this unit. So it's with the mean, the median, and the mode. And then the last thing is the spread, which is just the variability. So the two things we looked at for spread was the range and then the mean absolute deviation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about socks. In other words, you could say this lesson kind of socks. <laughs> and this, using those four things, you can draw some conclusions about the data sets and how to compare the data sets. Okay, so get this part written down and then let's go ahead and jump into an example. So we have here some uh, some data sets going on here with the number of flowers that have been sold. So Mr. Bruss class, Mr. Sullivan's class, and Mr. Kelly's class. So we have three different classes that are selling some flowers. These represent each student. So one of Mr. Bruss students didn't sell any. One of Mr. Bruss students sold seven. And then you have Mr. Sullivan's in here. A couple students sold two, a couple sold three, four kids sold four, two more kids sold five. So that's just these data sets. So what we're trying to do is describe these things. So what is the shape of each one of them? The shape is, is just like, what's the general shape? So this thing looks to be skewed right. This thing's pretty normal. I mean, it's kind of right in the middle. And then this one here, you can see this is skewed left. It's got the little tail over here on the left. So I'm putting here for Mr. Brust, his shape is going to be skewed right. Now you could write in the other ones here. I'm going to just leave these blank for just now because we're going to do Mr. Brust together here. Now what about outliers? Does he have any outliers? Yeah, this seven here, that seems to kind of be off on its own. So let's say that he does have an outlier and that would just be the number seven. Okay, now what? how would we do the mean, the median, and mode? We'd have to make a list of all these numbers. So we'd have to take the number. I'm just going to write it up here. I'd have to have zero, uh, one, one, and then how many twos are there? Four, one, two, three, four, and then threes, there's two of those, three, three, fours, there's two of those, four, four, and then the outlier here is a seven. So what we would do here to take the mean, we'd add them all up and divide by how many numbers are there? One, two, three, four, 12 of them. Okay, so add those all up, divide by 12, and we would get 2.58. All right, so you just got to trust me on that. I'm not going to show all the calculations on this lesson because that would take us a very long time to do this. So, so 2.58. Now, what about the, the median? The median is going to be that number in the middle. So let's just figure out where is the middle. If I have 12 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it would be right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, it'd be in between the 2 and the 2. So what's in between 2 and 2? Two? 2. The average of 2 and 2 is just 2. So there's our median, it's a two. And then the mode is the number that shows up the most. That's easy here, it's also a two, because the highest peak there. And then we get to the little bit a harder part, which is the spread. Well, the range isn't. Range is a simple seven minus nothing. The largest number minus the smallest number. Scroll down here. So that gives us a seven. And then the mean absolute deviation, that's where there comes in a lot more calculations. So I'm not gonna show all the steps on this. You could go back and watch a previous lesson if you need help. Maybe if your teacher's doing this lesson in class, they might have you work through every one. For this on the video, uh, to speed things up, I'm just gonna give you the answer here, and it is 1.347. The focus of this lesson is how to compare the data sets. So I'm not necessarily gonna show you again how to do everything from the last two lessons. Okay, so there we go with these. So now what I want you to do is figure out all of these here. So I'm gonna uh, pause the recording and then bring up all the answers for this stuff. So why don't you pause and try to figure out the answers to fill in for Mr. Sullivan's class and Mr. Kelly's class for all these. All right, so here are my answers. You can double check yours, maybe pause the video and just get these written down if you don't have them yet. And now we get to the part that would be new to you, which is just comparing them. So how do we compare these? Usually you'll have some type of question, a question that's being asked to talk about the difference between Mr. Brust, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Kelly's classes. So as we look at these, are there any things that we could just kind of kind of talk about? Well, we can see here with these data sets, this is what we're, we're going to try and describe. We come down here, one way that we could do this, so I've got three different little conclusions we could make. One is just that Mr. Data's, Mr. Data, <laughs> Mr. Brust's data is skewed right. 
So they sold the least number of flowers. Okay, now that's kind of easy to see that. Mr. Bruss sold less than, than Mr. Kelly and Mr. Sullivan. Theirs are grouped more to the right. Okay, and then you could also even compare their mean. Mr. Brust has a mean of only 2.58 compared to these other averages here. Uh, even the median. So every every uh, measure of central tendency for Mr. Brust is smaller. So that might be something I could have put in here, that each measure of central tendency is smaller. Uh, and so we know Mr. Brust sold the least. Okay, so uh, what's another conclusion? So I've just, I may, wrote down a few. Mr. Sullivan's class is all clustered together. So they don't really have any high numbers or low numbers. There's no outliers. Uh, so let me scroll back up here and show you. So Mr. Sullivan, yeah, they're all kind of centrally located together here, uh, hovering around the number four back and forth. There's no really big, no really high numbers. And then one more conclusion, Mr. Kelly's class sold the most. Uh, so before I read this second part, so Mr. Kelly's class sold the most. Let's look, look back up here. His measures of central tendency, 5.08, 5.5, and 6 for the mode, these are all larger than each one of these for Mr. Brust and Mr. Sullivan. So you can see, yeah, he definitely sold more. And so you could even be very specific and talk about the mean, the median, the mode, what the numbers are to demonstrate that you know what you're talking about. That's how you know Mr. Kelly's class sold more. You can also see that uh, they, his class has an outlier of zero, and that brought down their mean. So their mean is still larger, 5.08. But think about this, that outlier of zero. Mr. Kelly had some, you know, maybe some student was just like, no, I don't want to sell flowers. Forget this. So he just refused to do it. And so that one student brings down their mean. But even with that outlier, it's still larger than the others. So if you remove that outlier, you could see like, yeah, Mr. Kelly's class would have done really well compared to the other classes. All right. So uh, conclusions, comparing data sets. When we compare the data sets, there's different questions that we might be asked. So in the practice, you're going to have a few questions that will be specifically asking specific things. And so you might have to give some numbers, examples of, uh, of what you're comparing. Uh, and then if you don't have any specific thing that you're asked to conclude about, then you just try and make some generalizations based on the numbers that you've been able to figure out the spread, the mean absolute deviation. Uh, and so that shows you here, this mean absolute deviation of number one, that tells you Mr. Sullivan's, right? Yeah, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan's data is spread out the least. So Mr. Kelly's is spread out a little bit more. Mr. Bruss is spread out the most. That uh, helps us know what's going on with the spread. Okay, so that's everything for now. Rock that mastery check. And uh, I will not see you back in the next lesson because this is the end of this unit. And then rock that test.